Hey, what's up guys? Uh, today I'm going to show you how to use this system I built, which allows you to use Neural Amp Modeler with JZIRs. Um, it's a bit unusual because it involves using two IRs in a row. So two IRs in series. I did it this way because uh, as you already know, or you may already know, my IRs are made to work with specific amp sims in mind. Like I make one IR for every amp sim out there in the IR packs. So since NOM is based on user generated content where anybody can make their own amp model and new amp models are being made all the time, it makes it almost impossible for me to keep up with the never ending supply of new amps to support in the way that I do with regular amp sims, uh, where I would update normally I'd update like all of my IR packs two or three times a year to give them all the new amp sims that came out since, you know, the last update. Um, if I tried to do this, uh, with Nam, it would be never ending and the IR packs, which are already pretty huge to begin with would be more than double in size and would continue to grow from there like quickly. So, I came up with this system of using two IRs in series, which allows me to update a singular IR pack in a much quicker and more efficient way, um, where if you wanted me to add a new NAM model to that IR pack, I could do it that day, no problem. Um, so this is a free pack, by the way. Uh, but with that, it comes with a bit of confusion because it's a whole new idea and a different workflow than you're used to. So I'm making this video to show how I intend for these IRs uh, to work. Okay, so with that demo, I just wanted to show how I changed the tone of each of these um, individual, unique, uh, made by different people NAMs. You could hear when I hit the X when I disabled my IR, my EQ correcting IR as I'm calling it right now. When I disable that, you could hear how the amp is supposed to sound versus how I made them all kind of sound the same. That's the idea. That's how I'm getting the, this is the workaround where I can update these super easy. The idea is I kind of make all NAMs kind of conform to a singular, you know, basic EQ curve. This is like, I took all of the NAMs that I had and I, I took all of the IRs that I made out of them and I, uh, averaged them all together. And then I took that average and I applied that to everything so that they all kind of sound like that average. Uh, so with that, you can actually, you can use the Jay-Z IRs with that, or you could use any IRs with these. I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, but I basically, I want to go over the, um, the basic premise here. So the user experience, uh, you would want to like, let's say you have like an IR pack of mine that you downloaded inside the folder, you know, you've got all of the amp sims in here. Um, you know, the IRs that are supporting those specific amp sims at the top, I put a little underscore so that it's up at the top. Uh, you'll get a NAM folder now, and that has a singular IR in it. So this IR will work with all NAM amps. So long as you use this first IR in the chain. So like you would use this one first, which is in the, uh, in the pack that I have for uh, all of the individual amp sims, uh, all, all of the individual NAM models, and then you would use another IR loader to load your uh, your individual NAM 
um, JZIR that's for that artist. Like this one's for Cynic uh, Trace De Nair, right? So you would take this NAM guy and then you would load him into your regular IR loader. Uh, like for instance, you could use like, uh, you know, I, I use uh, M Convolution Easy all the time. Oh, I'm doing this wrong. Here we go. Hold on. Yay. All right. So M Convolution Easy. We've got, uh, right now I'm, listening, I'm using, you know, the, uh, the regular name stuff, no, uh, goofy Cody names, but, uh, here I'll throw this in and then we can listen to cynic, uh, for the demo here. So play that back again. All right. So here's the cynic IR as it's supposed to be heard with uh, all of the other amps in. So right now we're listening to it through the uh, Philip Chris. Uh, this is it through the, tri uh, the Mesa, the triple rectifier. Through the uh, Resington angle and through the Tim uh, 5152. So and just to show you, that's me enabling and disabling this one, right? So that's the idea. You use this IR second, you know, in a regular IR, IR, IR loader. Um, I don't know if not too many people are in Ableton. Most people are on Reaper, but just imagine this as like uh, the vertical, you know, column of plugins. The first column uh, would be your neural amp modeler by itself uh, with a, here, let me make this a little easier to look at. Maybe this will make more sense. Hold on. So we got two plugins. We've got Neural Amp Modeler with the NAM model loaded, dot NAM here. And then my, uh, my IR with the exact same name loaded here. And then you just load up uh, my NAM uh, IR that's in your regular JZ IR, IR packs. All right. So like any of these packs, I'm going to have a NAM folder and you'll have a singular IR that's meant for that to work with this system where you're, you're matching up one for one here. Um, the next kind of thing that makes this, I think easier to understand is, uh, when you download my IR pack for this, these EQ correction IRs, um, you're going to get a folder that's going to have a bunch of names of all of the, uh, all of the NAM models, right? So this is just, these are the exact same names that are on tone hunt. Like when you download a, um, when you download a zip file from tone hunt, you're going to get a file, a folder name, and it's going to be exactly this. So let's say that you have a folder full of all your NAM models. Right. So like, I don't know, we'll just go to the top here. Um, we have this 150 crater. I don't know what this is. Uh, oh, it's a crate. Okay, cool. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, but in their folder, they have the crate BHV or BV 150H dot NAM. And in my folder, it's the exact same name folder and it's the exact same name. Uh, you know, my IR has the exact same name as the, uh, the NAM file. It's just a dot wave instead of a dot nam. So these are the two pieces that you would plug into uh, nam when you want to load. You would load the nam file here, and you would load the wave file here. So uh, kind of a side note, but this is something that might help people uh, keep track of all this stuff because obviously this is new workflow. It's confusing. It's weird. Um, you can merge, like if you leave all of the names as they are, when you download them, like you don't rename things and you just kind of put all of these in a singular folder. Like I have here, just a ton of NAMs, you know, that I downloaded off a of tone hub and I have them all in one folder. It's, that's exactly how I laid it out with, uh, you know, with these EQ correction IRs. So what you can do is actually merge these folders. If you just grab, go inside of my, uh, the, the download here where it's the NAM JZIR high gain amp only EQ correction. <laughs> I'll probably need rename that at some point. Uh, but you just select it all, you know, control a, and then just drag it and drop it. Don't drop it on a folder, but drop it over here on the end of the column. And what that's going to do is basically merge all of this stuff together. So what you'll end up with is a folder that has both the NAM file 
and my IR right next to each other. So when you're using uh, when you're using NAM and you go to load something, here let me get uh, let me copy that address real quick. So I'm just gonna go up here, copy, then I'll go to the NAM, and you just go up here and paste, and then right here. Now I've got triple X boss SD one. So I'll grab that, and then when I hit the file folder here, same thing. Just go here, triple X SD one. And then that kind of keeps things like neat and tidy by uh, merging those folders, if that makes sense. Uh, you don't have to do it this way. I just thought that this was probably the most logical way of like keeping track of all this stuff so that it's not uh, an insane maze of folders like uh, most stuff is. Uh, okay, yeah, so that's, I think the, the basic gist. Um, some other benefits here. Uh, you don't have to use the uh, the Jay-Z IRs as your IR. Like I said, I, I made this an average EQ curve. So you could actually use this in different ways, like more creative ways than just using, you know, this with my IRs. Like I made it for that, obviously, but I just wanted to show you there are other IRs that you could use once you've implemented this uh, EQ curve correction. You can then use your IR loader to do whatever you want. Like uh, here, this is the Cynic one. We're listening to this. Yep. Here we go. All right. So you could also use, you know, here's the catharsis stuff. And it sounds, you know, normal. It doesn't sound weird. Like I made it that way on purpose so that you could integrate your own IRs into this kind of workflow. You know, here's uh, just a, a pack of random IRs I have. Uh, Borgen stuff. Bagren. I always say his name wrong. Bagren. All right. All right. So you get the idea with that. You can use someone else's IRs afterwards. You don't have to use my NAM IR that I have in the IR packs. Um, something else. One of the reasons this is cool, I think, as and this is worth showing off, is uh, the difference between stereo IRs or uh, stereo instances of, of NAM. So you have, uh, let me see if I can set this up correctly. You can tell how well I uh, plan these videos, right? All right. So that is toggling here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what I want to do is show you basically how the difference between using NAM and emissary for the same IR. Uh, so this is NAM. And I'm doing this in stereo now, so that probably sounds better. All right. And what we're listening to right now is the Resington Fireball on the right and Tim R's uh, 5152 on the left. And then I'm going to swap it over to Emissary because I use Emissary in every freaking video, right? Uh, but here we go. Here's Emissary. You can almost hear how it's like cleaner sounding, like more sterile, I guess. But then you go to these and it's it's more girthy. Like you can see I'm switching it here. Alright, so uh something else. The uh you can change up with by doing it this way, you can change up using different amps, like different NAM models uh, on the left and the right speaker, and you get those different personalities out of them. Uh, I'm going to loop a section of video here, or a section of the audio, specifically these chugs right here. And uh, I'm going to just swap between a couple of different, uh, well, two different NAM models on the right speaker just to show you how you might not, you know, these these pretty much do sound alike, but there is slight differences specifically in how they play. Like, I think that's the most interesting thing about NAM is the fact that there's so much personality uh, from one uh, NAM model to the next. Like, they don't have like the same, same, you know, all, all the algorithmic, like the regular, you know, neural uh, DSP or, you know, anyone else who makes like regular amp sims, 
all of those kind of sound alike after a while, you know, like they all have that kind of same tone, but all the nams I think have a unique character to them. So listen to these chugs and I'm going to flip between uh, these two on the right side, on the right channel. And you can just hear how the, the inflection and the, the detail, the personality of the amp is different. So that's with the uh, angle. You can also, I mean, you can already kind of hear it between these two, but let me let me swap these two. I like the I like this one better, but that's the thing. Since they're both, since these two have that revoicing, you know, the EQ correction on them, you can change the amp without uh, really having to change anything else. Like uh, you can flip through the amps and use the EQ correction uh, and your the tone of your song isn't going to change at all. You're pretty much just like searching for the right personality of a guitar amp, that, you know, for the, the style of song or whatever that you're writing. So, yeah, that's, I think the... Uh, I think that's the, 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 the bread and butter of this whole thing. Um, this video is totally, I mean, I, I planned this, but this is pretty much thrown together. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I realize this is a confusing workflow, but I hope that this at least, you know, <clears throat> like demystifies it a little bit. I'll make some more videos, maybe shorter videos that are, you know, individual pieces of this, uh, if people need it. And uh, otherwise, you know, feel free to experiment with this stuff as you want. Like maybe try using the wrong EQ correction with the wrong amp. You know, like you can get some interesting uh, results with that. I'll, I'll do that real quick on the, this guy here. So we're listening to the right speaker here. It's like, that sounds pretty fucking cool. Uh, but then here, I'll turn it off real quick. You can also hear this is Pip Thrash Bug 1990 all by itself. And then that's with my EQ correction re-enabled. And here's it with that Tim R. I'll flip between these two. So you see with... By keeping the same uh, NAM model, you're keeping the same amp personality, like the the feel and the way that it plays and how it chugs and all that stuff. You're keeping all of those attributes while drastically changing the tone by using these IRs uh, that I developed for, uh, you know, Jay-Z IR integration. All right. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> I always make videos way longer than I want to. So I apologize for that. All right. Let me know if you have any questions and uh, hopefully you guys find these fun, interesting, useful, whatever. All right. Take care.